We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Langston, Oklahoma, and that is a frequent stop for Midwest Sports Net. We enjoy doing Midwest Sports Saturdays up there as we get to see the Langston Lions play football and also get to visit today with Quentin Morgan, the head football coach who is heading into his eighth full season at the helm. Coach, last year, six and four, we were up there for the season opener that day, an overtime loss, three-point loss in overtime. Uh, the the losses last year, every single one of them was to a team that had at least a share of its own conference title. Of course, three of those there in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Talk about last year a little bit and bring us up to speed. Uh, last year was a was a was a very good year. I mean, uh, it's not what I initially wanted, but still, we, we were able to grow as a team, uh, mature as a team, and I think that was really important, especially you know looking at the youth of the program. And so I'm excited about, uh, you know, continuing to build off what we've done last year. Coach, in the Sooner Athletic Conference, it's a conference that really is growing. You know, I know that for uh, a number of years, Langston played with the, the uh, Central States Football League, kind of a, uh, a scheduling alliance, a conference, if you will, there. But when the Sooner Athletic Conference started sponsoring football and, and you know, reaching out the teams. More and more teams are being brought in, and they're quality teams as well. It just seems to be getting better year by year. A couple of movements around in head coach, coaching positions coming into 24, but talk a little bit about the SAC. Oh, it's a great conference to play in. You know, you watch – I've watched the Texas Westlands and the, and the, and the Ottawa's, you know, those programs and Louisiana Christians, uh, you know, them continue to grow, you know, they're, uh, they're investing into their programs, the way their kids are playing, uh, you know, you never know now, nah, it's what it has become, you know, you can easily get upset by a, a Nelson, who, who was formerly known as Sagu, I mean, you, you got great play throughout the whole conference, and it's exciting because it now, Team A doesn't always beat Team B, you know, and, and that's, and that's, makes it competitive, and, uh, and I love it. Well, having watched the Lions over the years as well, Langston brings a lot to the table in the conference too. And we look ahead to 24. Let's start with the offense. Torrance Bardell coming back was a, a big part of that offense last season, especially the ground game. Uh, talk a little bit about your offense and uh, start right there. Uh, we'll start with Bardell. I mean, uh, if you really pay attention, you know, he would. It, it hurt us a whole lot when Bardell got injured this year, you know. Uh, you go into an Ottawa game where it's tied up at halftime and he comes out and a twisted ankle in. And then from there, the kind of like, you know, the ball continued to roll down. And so he was a big part of our offense last year. Uh, we missed him the first game that you mentioned about uh, against Mid America. He didn't, play, he didn't play that game because he wasn't cleared by NAI eligibility center. So just what this young man has done in his five games or uh, six games that he's able to play up under us as our uh, starting quarterback. Was, was tremendous, and I think the sky is the limit for him, and I think he's going to get better and better the more comfortable he gets with our scheme. Uh, along with him coming back is a couple of key receivers. Kevin Allen is our all-conference receiver, along with LeVon Williams, who's our tight end slash um, wide out. Uh, Ivory Will Wright. Uh, we have a lot of returners coming back at that receiver's position, so I'm excited about that core, along with you know them getting the opportunity to gel with uh, Terrence Bordell. We're visiting now with Coach Quentin Morgan from the Langston Lions here on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, a number of players on your defensive line leading the way in tackles for you last season. Look at the defensive side of the ball, Coach. Damian Lowry among those. He's coming back. And How big is that, by the way? If you have three defensive linemen leading your team in tackles, doesn't sound like the ball's getting very far past that line. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. You know, you, 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 that means that they're being coached well. You know, I guess Coach Calvin Miller, you know, he does a great job with that defensive line. He's been with me for years. And, you know, the, the, the kids, they buy in, you know, and they have their energy. They work hard. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about to see what, what Damon is going to do this year. I think that he's really going to, you know, uh, have a great year uh, this year playing ball. Uh, a lot of his stats, I think, were kind of like, uh, a little messed up because uh, I, I know for a fact there's a couple of games where he's averaging almost like 20 tackles, 30 tackles. Like, so uh, not averaging, but had at least 20 or 30 tackles. But, uh, but yeah, he, he, he's exciting to watch. Um, and uh, we got a couple other guys that's going to be playing right on side of him that's going to be very exciting to watch. Uh, we have a 
Travis Martin, our uh, all-conference cornerback. He's been all-conference for the last couple of years in a row. Uh, did a great job at his at his pro day. He's going to he, he, there. Uh, we had Green Bay and the New York Giants here, and he clocked a four four flat at six two, two hundred and fifteen pound cornerback. So he's one of the biggest corners going in this year and uh, into the draft this year, NFL wise. I'm excited to see what he what he's going to do. He can uh, basically eliminate one side of the field with his size and speed. And uh, so the, de the defense is based around those young men. We got a couple of transfers in, but I'm not going to go into all detail about that. But it, the majority of our defense is, is back. Uh, Keelan uh, Mosley is back as our starting linebacker. Um, yes, a uh, couple of guys, a lot of guys came back, you know, uh, Madre, Madre Strada. So I'm excited about to see what we're going to do defensively. Don't you have somebody that's six two, two fifteen in your secondary that runs a four four? That's an unfair advantage. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, and the thing about it is, uh, Joey, I've been telling the conference that this for the last couple of years. You know, uh, hey, I keep telling, them, hey, we got one that's going to go to the league from out of, out of our conference, and you know, it, it just until he gets in front of the scouts and he you know, run in front of the scouts and everybody get to see what I see. I mean, they see it on a game day basis, but you know, you're going to be kind of biased when it comes to game day because the kid is on the other opposite side, but in actuality, this makes the conference look strong as well. We've got two kids, like the kid from uh, Louisiana Christian. I can't think of his name. I want to say is, I, I can't think of his name when last now, but I know he is also one of those, Top tier talents that we have in our conference this year that we've got to definitely advocate for as all coaches because we don't normally get guys with this type of opportunity in our conference. So we want to we want to definitely advertise that to let the world know that the sooner has quality kids in it that are that are getting those NFL looks. Exactly, Coach. I I agree with you entirely, and that needs to be promoted. Um, we look at special teams aspect of the game really quickly. Octavio Resendez comes back. Michael. Nash comes back to uh, – he was a your leading returner, had a kickoff return for a touchdown last year as well. Resendez, your kicker. Talk a little bit about special teams. I'm excited. Both of those guys are coming back. Our special teams has uh, done a great job last year up under the tutorship of uh, Coach uh, Frankenberg. Um, I'm excited to see what we're going to do this year. I would like for us to continue to be a threat to kickoff return with Michael. Um, basically, you know, uh, flipping the field for us. It makes it easier for our offense, along with, with Octavio. He's done a great job of, of stepping in the punter's role because we lost uh, uh, Elliot Lannis, Yanis to a Division One program. Uh, I think he ended up at Wyoming. So, you know, uh, a couple of guys have, uh, from Division Ones have been scouting off of our programs down here, you know, Pulling us and pulling our kids over to them, but it's it's all fine. And I'm so proud of Octavio the way he, he has picked up the slack and uh and and done a great job with flipping the field for us. Not only just in the punt game, but he also does a great job with kickoffs and uh, field goals as well. So I'm I'm excited about it. it. It's you know retaining our guys and keeping our foundation strong is always a great thing. Season gets underway September 7th, and you don't have to go very far. First two games on the road with a bye week in between, but you just travel right down the road to Edmond, take on Division II, the University of Central Oklahoma. Uh, we're going to try to sneak up there and, and see that game, Coach. That should be fun one to watch, and it really is. I mean, you know, you're playing in each other's backyards all the time anyway. I'm sure recruiting a lot of the same players. You get the bye week on the road at Louisiana Christian. That one should be a fun one to get the Sooner Conference schedule underway. And then finally back at home on September 28th to take on Texas College. Tell us a little bit about the opening to your schedule. Uh, I love it. You know, uh, I think the UCO game prepares us for the uh, Louisiana Christian game. Uh, from what we're we're noticing that what um, UCO does, uh, we figure they're going to try to come play big boy ball against us and try to just ground and pound on us. They're not going to try to play into our, um, I guess you would say, our strengths and just try to throw the ball around on us. You know, uh, so and it's the same thing with Louisiana Christian. They're big, run the ball down the throat type of team and, and not very efficient in the past game. So I think the game against UCO is going to be a great tune up to go into conference. And uh, I'm excited about it, man. I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the, the state of Oklahoma to see what Langston has here on the hill when it comes to the division two programs here in the state of Oklahoma, even though we may have lack of resources and, and lack of, uh, you know, funding when it comes to scholarships, but it doesn't mean that we have a lack of heart when it comes time to time to play the game. 
Coach, I honestly, I, in in the games that I've gotten to go to in the, in the last ten years, just just in that window, I have to tell you, I don't know that there's a much more enjoyable place to watch a game though than Anderson Stadium. It just uh, it's a fun place to get to see a ball game, and you all put on a good show, win or lose. It is a it's a great place. So we look forward to seeing the Langston Lions this season, and Coach. We're going to follow you throughout 2024. Coach Quentin Morgan, head coach of the Langston Lions, thank you, sir, for previewing the season with us today here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you, Joy. 